I am the Whistler, and I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Tonight I am keeping a strange rendezvous. This man is a human derelict, broke, discouraged, unable to hold a job because of ill health. His name is Lee Selfridge Nugent. I knew him in better days, when he possessed money, power, influence. But fate decreed that those material things should slip away, and that I, the Whistler, should find him tonight, alone in a strange city on this park bench. What can the future hold for a man like this? Ironic, isn't it? These people all have money in the bank waiting for them. Yet, for some reason, they do not come to claim it. Coincidence, that's all it is. You're not the Lee Nugent they're looking for. You are Lee Selfridge Nugent. Your mother's name was Mary, not Stella. Forget about it. Desperation prompts this man to think that he can compromise with his conscience. We shall see how he fares. Watch him play every day? Sure, except on the days when I have to put the clinic. Gee, thanks. Herman! That's Herman. That's a good throw. Thanks. You know something? The clinic yesterday, a lady from Australia told me that maybe next year I could walk. And after that, maybe if I exercise right, I could even play ball. Say, wouldn't that be something? I'll say. Say, where'd the kids play ball before the building was torn down? What building? Wasn't there a building on this lot? No, it's always been just a lot. Oh. Well, goodbye, son. You're going to be a great ball player someday. Thanks. Come on, Herman. Give him another fast one. Come on. Good morning. If you're looking for a vacancy, there ain't any. If you're selling something, I won't buy it. And if you're begging, you can just run along. There's plenty of work for those that want it. I'm wondering about that vacant lot. How long ago was that building torn down that was on it? It wasn't torn down, it burned down. Burned down, huh? How long ago was that? Oh, long before I moved in this block. And I've lived here for 20 years. So you ain't one of them carnival fellas that's planning on putting one of them noisy merry-go-rounds on that lot, are you? I warn you, I won't stand for it. I had the police on the last one that tried it. I don't want to assure you I'm not interested in putting a merry-go-round on that lot. But I am considering for a shooting gallery. Nice dog you got here. Yeah. Mike's a swell guy. Intelligent, too. Yeah, hello, Mike. You know, he knows quicker than we do when our number comes on the alarm bell. <laughs> yeah. Then he beats the men to his place on the hook and ladder. Yeah. Hiya, Mike. Any big fires lately? No. Been kind of dull lately. Last big one was that Acme Warehouse bar about a year ago. Tell me you had a big one, a real big one down here some time ago. 
Like Reed Street, apartment building? That's probably before your time. Oh, no. I remember it just like it was yesterday. Yeah. Seven people died in that fire. Seven? Yeah. Three of them missed the net when they jumped from the sixth floor. Awful mess. Reed Street. That used to be a fashionable neighborhood. Not tenements like it is now. Oh, well, you know, time changes neighborhoods. How long ago was that exactly? I never forget a big one. That was October. Early October, 1912. Long ago was that, huh? Yep. I was sitting right here in front of the old firehouse. Just as I am now, reading the political news when the alarm came in. That was the year that uh, Woodrow Wilson, Bill Taft, and Teddy Roosevelt were all having a battle royal for president. The Democratic jackass outrun Taft's elephant and Teddy's bull moose, and Wilson was elected. Doggone his political fight you ever saw. Reckon you don't remember much about that campaign, do you? 1912? I was just a boy at the time. Uh, Twelve years old, to be exact. Yeah, I, I, I was just 12 years old. That's the file of the Daily Register for October 1912. I hope it helps you. I hope so. Find what you wanted. Exactly what I wanted. Thank you. I hardly think I can help you locate Lee Nugent. Our records show he was placed in a private home six months after the death of his mother and sister. Have you the name and address of the people who gave him a home? Yes, I do. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Carlson. They lived at 11816 Runnymede Street. But this information is of little value. Lee ran away from home, the Carlson home, in 1915 and hasn't been heard of since. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Carlson died some years ago. I see. About Lee's father, have you any information regarding him? Only that he and Mrs. Nugent were separated and an effort was made to find them in 1912 when the boy became a ward of this society. Uh, there is a notation here that he was reported to be somewhere in South America at the time. I'm sorry, I can't give you any more information. Well, you've been very kind. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. You want something, brother? Depends on how much of a gambler you are. I never gamble. If it's a suit you want, I can sell it to you cheap. But for cash... Oh, I haven't any cash at the moment. Then come back the moment you have it. Well, that won't do. I have to have a suit in order to get the cash. Let me show you something. If it ain't cash, I don't want to look at it. Yeah, but look this over. This is good for cash. Maybe a lot of it. All now I look. see is a piece of old newspaper. And for that, you get no suit in this store. Now, do me a favor and go away. Okay, if you're not interested in making 100% profit on a very small investment, I'll find somebody who is. Wait a minute, brother. Did you say 100%? Yes. Why not? How small an investment? The price of a suit and enough money for food and lodging in a cheap hotel until I can claim a dormant account that's waiting for me at the Standard Savings Bank. Hey, look. There's my name on the list in their advertisement. Mm -hmm. You can't lose. How do I know you are Lee Nugent? The government says I am. Here's my Social Security card. See? Mm -hmm. The whole gamble amounts to about $60. $20 for the suit and the balance for, for expenses until I claim the account. Mm -hmm. What if there ain't $60 in the account? Oh, but there's sure to be. It says right there that every account's over $100. Come on, give me a suit and $40 in cash, and I'll get a cheap hotel room. 
Oh, no. You take no 40 bucks of mine. If I'm going into this thing, I've got to protect my investment. In a hotel, I might not find you when you get the money, if you get it. I got an apartment upstairs. You'll move in with me. Then if you don't get the money, you give me back my suit. And all I'm out is the food you eat while you're here. That's my final proposition. Take it or leave it, brother. You're a shrewd trader, but it's a deal. You going somewhere? Yeah, mail a letter. I'll go with you. Oh, yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, you, you can keep an eye on your suit. I haven't any money for a poacher's tent. Well, you can get me a pack of cigarettes, too, huh? I'll be with you in a minute. Good morning, Mr. Sorsby. Good morning. You got a letter for me? No, there's one here for a man named Lee Nugent in care of you. Uh, do you know him? Uh, yeah, he, he's staying with me for a while. I'll see that he gets it. Oh, okay. table in the living room. I'll get it later. Listen, brother, how come you get mail at my place and I only met you yesterday? Well, it could be that I told some friends of mine that I'd be stopping here with you. What friends? You ain't talked to nobody since we made our deal. Oh, that was before I met you. Before you met... Sure, I knew that we'd shake a deal. You got a reputation in the neighborhood, you know, of always being willing to spend a dollar in order to make two. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Well, get this straight, Nugent. I don't trust you and I'm protecting my investment. When you walk out of here with that suit of mine to go to the bank, I'm going right along with it. Good idea. But all three go, you, me, and the suit. Only when we get to the bank, I'll have to ask you to wait outside. You're, uh, you're not exactly the prepossessing type, you know. This is as far as you go. Oh, why can't I wait just outside the bank? Now listen, it's going to be tough enough for me to convince them that I'm Lee Nugent without you hanging on to spoil everything. But I can identify you. I'm a legitimate businessman. You're staying at my apartment. If I go in with you, it'll help your claim. I'll play it my way if you want to double your money back. Okay, but I'll be watching that bank door every minute. Fill this out and take it to window number three. Thank you. I'd like to inquire about the dormant accounts you're advertising. Right over at that desk, sir. Mr. Simmons will take care of it. Thank you. you take those drafts upstairs and check on those other accounts. I'll call you later. Simmons? Yes. May I help you? I think you can. I'm I'm Lee Nugent. Come in, Mr. Nugent. Won't you sit down? Well, thank you. I presume you're here to discuss the dormant account listed in our advertisement. Well, that's the general idea. Naturally, we will require proof that you are the beneficiary named in the account. Mm -hmm. Have you any identification? Some. I have, uh, well, I have my social security card, and uh, there's a pawn ticket for a ring, and uh, a letter from a friend of mine. Haven't you anything more? We can't turn over a sum of money to you merely on the strength of a letter, a pawn ticket, and a social security card. No. I... Have you any suggestions? I'll get the file on the account. It may take a few moments.
Is Mr. Simmons taking care of you all right? Oh, yes, everything's fine. He's going to get some papers. I see. You're not leaving, Mr. Nugent. Why? I was just curious about that siren. Oh, an ambulance. Yes, they go by the bank quite often. There's a hospital a few blocks up the street. Uh, Mr. Nugent, have you anyone to vouch for you? Someone of standing whom you've known for some time? I'm afraid I haven't. Certainly someone must have known you over a period of years. Well, I can't think of anyone. See, I ran away from home when I was only 15. I didn't have much of an education. I'd take any job that came along. Won't you sit down? What kind of jobs? Anything to make a living. Harvesting in Kansas, lumbering in the North Woods, worked in a construction gang, even down to docks now and then. I'm what I guess you'd call a floater. The fellow's a floater. He, well, he really hasn't got a name. I almost forgot what my last name was. People just called me Lee and let it go at that. I see. You say this letter is from a friend of yours. Mind if I read it? Oh, please do. I'm afraid it won't be of much help. He was a floater like myself. Only difference was he had a college education. Said he was going to write a book sometime. Always packed a portable typewriter with him. Slim. What's the man's last name? Well, I don't know, and to tell you the truth, he never told me. This letter's absolutely worthless for identification. Oh, I was afraid it wouldn't be much help. You say you ran away from home when you were 15. Why? Were your parents cruel to you? Oh, I wasn't living with my parents at the time. I was living with some people by the name of Carlson. I remember they lived on Runnymede Street. Where were your parents? Well, my mother and sister were killed in the fire. I don't know where my dad was. My mother and father weren't living together. It seems to me as though I remember my mother said something about his being in South America. When were you born? Well, I can't tell you that exactly. I suppose my mother told me, but kids forget things. I was uh, 12 years old at the time of the fire. When was that? In October, 1912. Where was this house of yours you say burned down? Well, it wasn't a house. It was an apartment building. 295 Reed Street. Well, I remember it very vividly. I had to jump from the sixth floor. A thing like that sticks with a fella. I can readily see how it would. You say your younger sister died in the fire? Well, she wasn't younger. She was three years older than I am. And I suppose you remember her name? Sure, sure, Dorothy. How long have you known about the existence of this file? Oh, only since yesterday. It was strictly accidental. I happened to see your ad, and I thought, well, isn't that queer that the bank are trying to find people to give money to? <laughs> <laughs> then I saw my mother's name and mine. You were very fortunate. You mean I get the money? <laughs> Not yet. Naturally, the bank will have to conduct an investigation. Naturally, but uh, how soon do I get it? You'll be notified within five days. Mm -hmm. I take it this is your correct mailing address? Yes, that's correct. How much money is there in the account? I'm not permitted to disclose the amount until the investigation is completed. Well, that doesn't tell me very much, does it? Not much. You'll just have to be patient. Good day, Mr. Nugent. Good day. You get all fixed up, sir? Yes, thank you. Uh, do you own one of those government accounts? Well, yes, what about it? Oh, nothing. I'm just curious to know why anybody would leave money laying in a bank for 20 years without claiming it. Well, I'm curious about that, too. Not yet. They want five days to investigate. Did you say five days? Oh, don't worry. I'll get it. I gave them all the right answers. Maybe so, but I got to board you for five days. Don't forget, it goes on your bill. Hello, Mr. Sarsby. Mm. Quite a stack of mail this morning. Bills mostly, first mm. of the month.
Mr. Nugent. Mr. Nugent. Letter from the bank king. Open it and see how much you get after I get mine. How much? It doesn't say. They want me to call up the bank again. Probably to ask me some more questions. Uh. Oh, it's you. Naturally. Well, this is your observation post. Yeah, and don't forget I'm a very observant guy. I'll be in on the payoff. Good morning. I see you came back. Good morning. Well, Mr. Nugent, come right in. Didn't lose any time getting here, did you? Do you know any reason why I should lose time? No reason at all. Do you wish to leave the money in the bank or take it out? It's okay. Yes. The bank has decided that the money is rightfully yours. How much? Twenty-nine thousand and ten dollars, including accrued interest. I presume you'll want to open a checking account. I'll uh, take it with me. Very well, I'll have a check for I want it in cash. All right, if you insist. I'll get the money. It'll take a few moments. Don't go away. What did he mean when he told you not to go away? Will he come back with the money or a detective? Everybody in the place seems to be staring at you, waiting. It's still not too late to change your mind. Well, Mr. Nugent, I guess this is a big day in your life. Everybody in the place is talking about it. Really? Yes, sir. This, um, this is our standard release. Um, you seem nervous. Well, I am a little. $29,000 is a lot of money to a fellow that's broke. $29,000 is a lot of money, period. Sign here, please. The real Lee Nugent had no middle name. Is it too late? Did Mr. Simmons see you make your first mistake? I plotted it. So I see. Perhaps you'd better use another blank. There you are. There you are, Mr. Nugent. Uh, you'll find uh, 28 $1,000 bills and the balance in smaller denominations. Better count it. I trust you. Oh, uh, take my advice and put most of that money in a safe place as quickly as possible. I will. Thank you, Mr. Simmons, and good day. Good day. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Nugent, and good luck. Thank you. That's our man. Hold it, Mr. Nugent. We want a picture. <laughs> Don't be so bashful. Give us a big smile. Hey, give me that. Come on, give me oh, that. Oh, no, you don't. Beat it. Okay, what's the idea of taking my picture? Because you're Lee Nugent. You've just come into a big fortune. That's news, and I want a story. I'm Pat Henley of the Daily Register. 
How does it feel to be so rich? Oh. Okay, so I'll print my own story. Rags to riches, with pictures. Read all about yourself in the afternoon of this. I saw you duck behind your hat. Were you trying to shake me? No, don't be silly. I was trying to get rid of that Joe reporter and her photographer. Oh, no kidding. Well, why didn't you hold them here till I could get in the picture? After all, I'm your financial backer. Hey, did you get the money? Yeah, I got it. How much? Considerable. Well, how much? There's a hundred dollars. I guess that squares this, huh? hundred dollars? Lee Nugent, you're an honest man. That's why I trusted you. There's never a suspicion. <clears throat> Uh, tonight, we'll celebrate, huh? Nah. I know just the place to go. No celebration. Our little transaction's in it. This is where we split up. Oh, ain't you coming back to get your things? What things? Oh, that's right. I forgot you. Ain't got no things. Mm -hmm. Well, so long. Goodbye. Yeah, I guess I kind of ruined your stock and trade, didn't I? And you couldn't help it, Mr. Nugent? How'd you know my name? I heard the lady call you Lee Nugent and... So did the gentleman that just left. That's right. I guess I'm a little bit jittery. Hey, are you scared of something? What makes you think I'm scared? I've been carrying this tray around the streets for a lot of years. I study people's faces. I generally know when they're scared. Well, this time you're wrong. I haven't a thing in the world to worry about. Not a thing. Wonderful feeling. So here. Here's... Uh... Ten dollars for any of the damage that I might have done. Gee, thanks, Mr. Nugent. Thanks very much. Hey, tell me, uh, what's the best hotel in this town? Why, uh, the Ramsey Arms over on Shoreham Avenue. Where can a guy get a couple of good suits? Well, you can't beat the Edward shop on Fifth Street. I'd say thanks. Say, well, what's your name? Just plain Smith. Most people call me Limpy, on account of my game late. Well, good luck, Limpy. Thanks, Mr. Nugent. I'll take this suit, too. That's three altogether. Can you uh, make the alterations and have them over to the hotel by 5 o'clock this afternoon? We can have one ready for you and deliver the other tomorrow. That's fine. Your name, please? Uh, Selfridge. First name or initial? L. L. Selfridge. Your address? Ramsey Arms Hotel. Ramsey Arms Hotel. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Paper, daily register. Paper. Thank you. Paper, get your paper here. Daily register. Paper. Hello, Mr. Donner. Thank you, sir. Paper, daily register, paper. Paper, daily register, paper. Paper, daily register, paper. It's a paper, madam. Paper, paper, daily register, paper, sir. Paper. <laughs> The street peddler. Yeah? Well, what do you know? I know I'm gonna kill him. Why oh, you gonna find him? Says here he didn't even go back to the place he was staying after he got the money. I'll find him, all right. What would you do if you suddenly fell heir to thirty thousand dollars? Me? I'd get myself some swab clothes, stay at the best hotels in town, really have myself a time. That's right. Even you can figure that out.
Here's the wine you wanted, Mr. Selfridge. Where would you like it? I'll just put it down. And open it, will you, please? Yes, sir. I brought you an evening paper, too. Oh, thank you. There's a story in there about a lucky stiff who got 30,000 bucks that he didn't even know he owned until he read the ad in the paper. Certainly was lucky. <laughs> yeah. He was just a drifter. Didn't have a dime. Something like that should happen to me. Would you care to pay for the check, Mr. Selfridge, or sign it? No, I, I'm a pay-as-you-go man. Oh. It's all right. Keep the change. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Say, by the way, uh, what's the name of a good nightclub in this town where the food is perfect and the, well, the entertainment isn't too bad? Well, that's easy. The Club Royale is the spot for a man who likes the best. Fine. I'll try it. You're feeling pretty confident, <laughs> aren't you, Lee? You're almost convinced that nobody will recognize you from that picture in the paper. Seems like a toast to doubtful security. Let me speak to Eddie Donnelly. Hello, Donnelly. This is Sellers, bell cabinet, Ramsey Arms. That party you were asking about checked in here this afternoon. Yes. Are you sure? Positive. He registered as L. Selfridge. He's going to have dinner at the Club Royale. Thank you. get big-hearted and offer to buy you a drink. The least you can do is look pleasant. No, I'm sorry, Tom. I was thinking about that story I wrote today. Ah, oh, forget it. When you've been a reporter as long as I have, you'll realize it's silly to think about a story once you've turned it in. No, but doesn't it strike you as strange that a man who's broke and out of a job should refuse to open up when he's had $30,000 practically thrust upon him? No, no, it doesn't. If I had 30000 bucks thrust upon me, I can think of plenty of people I wouldn't speak to, including you. <laughs> That's what I like about you. You're such a cheerful character. Yeah. I got that way covering night court. Want me to speak to the city editor? Gladly trade your nightclubs for night court. No, thanks. I meet a better class of heels in night court. Mm -hmm. Be seeing you. Bye. Good evening. Good evening. How do you do, sir? May I help you? Do you have a table? For one cent? Yes, I'm along. I do, sir. How nice. Thank you. Never mind the menu. I want the best dinner you've got in the house. All the trimmings. I'll leave it to you. Excellent, monsieur. You will not regret the confidence you have placed in me. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Nugent. Remember me? Pat Henley of the Register. Why, of course I remember you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. You know you, that article... Excuse me. You look very different than you did this morning. I hardly knew you. A distinct improvement, I might add. Think so? Shall I order the grand dinner for two, monsieur? Well, I don't know what I'm having. I've left it all to him. But I'd love to have you join me. Oh, thank you. I love surprises. <laughs> yes, madame. Thank you. You seem a little jittery about something. Want to tell me what's worrying you? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's just that possibly I'm not used to this sort of thing. Oh, don't let a nightclub throw you. Let's dance. Music's on your check. It's a shame not to use it. I haven't danced in a long time. Good. Then you won't be trying any of that fancy stuff that gets a woman down.
man who's out of practice, you do all right for yourself. A good partner helps. Nicely put, Mr. Newton. Very nice. He took my tip and came here, all right. That's him, the tall fellow dancing with the blonde. There's something for your trouble. Thanks, Mr. Dunn. Good evening, sir. Are you dining alone, sir? Yes, alone. This way, please. Order now, sir? No, not now. Yes, sir. You are worried about something. Well, this time you're right. Friend of yours? Never saw him before in my life. Hey! Any reason that man should be sizing you up like that? There might be. Are you going to tell me about it? Do I have to ferret it out for myself? Maybe I'll tell you all about it sometime. Right now, I want you to do me a favor. Take this money and pay the bill. I'm leaving. Oh, isn't that kind of silly? If that character's really after you, we'll have somebody waiting outside. I'm not leaving by the front door. I've got a better idea. I'll get to a telephone call half a dozen nice, friendly cops I'm personally acquainted with. Uh, that's no good. This man probably is a detective. So you had a reason to be camera shy. Yes, I did. Tell you all about that sometime. I suppose I won't see you again. Oh, yes, well, I'll call you at the newspaper office. Hey, boy. Yes. Is there any other way out of this place? Oh, no, sir. This is one-way room, sir. Uh, that's the supply closet. What would happen if I gave you $10? Yes, sir. For that kind of money, it would become a two-way room. Sir. Where'd the fellow go that just came in here? A uh, fellow? What, uh, uh, what fellow? No, you must be looking for the invisible man, sir. Mm -hmm. Supply closet, sir. Where'd he go? Go? Uh, no violence, sir. The gentleman just placed a ten dollars worth of emergency exit. See here. Look at that. Uh, yeah.
This is an amazing turn of events, isn't it, Lee Nugent? You went to infinite pains to prove that you were the man to whom the money belonged. And now you are hunted. Is it by someone who may know of the fraud you perpetrated? <laughs> Too, sir. Ramsey Arms Hotel. Limpy, what's the idea? Don't ask questions. Tell the driver not to stop at your hotel. Keep right on going, driver, until I tell you to stop. on the street watching you. Look, Mr. Nugent. I was passing your hotel peddling the merchandise, and I spot a couple of hard-looking guys asking Pete, the doorman, if a Mr. Selfridge had got back yet. He said he hadn't. I didn't think anything of it. Then these guys moved down to a doorway, and they started gabbing. So I eased over to them, and from what I heard, I tumbled that you were Mr. Selfridge. What'd they say about me? Well, one of them was telling how you got away from him at the Club Royale. He said he was going to get you anyway. He had a, a kind of a crazy look in his eye. How'd you happen to head me off? I started watching the traffic coming from the direction of the Club Royale. Boy, it was a lucky thing I spotted you in that cab. Yes, it was lucky. What are they after you for? Is there something to do about that money you got in the bank? Tell you the truth, I don't know. Why don't you go to the cops? Because there are complications. Oh, I didn't mean to get personal. Haven't you got any plans? Yes. I'm getting out of town for a while. Do you know anything about the trains this time of night? Oh, you wouldn't stand a chance without a reservation. Your best bet is a bus. There's two or three of them leaving the terminal at 8th and Main around midnight. Good. You say you know the doorman at the Ramsey Arms? Sure, I stop and kid with him almost every night. You know him well enough to get in my room and get something for me? I can't leave without it. Oh, I can get by Pete, all right, but... there's a couple other things to consider. Those two guys waiting for you on the outside and... The night clerk and the elevator boy on the inside. I know another way, though. Oh. Huh. Through the service entrance. Good. Here's the key to room 412. On the ice box, at the bottom of the freezing unit, you'll find a tin box. You bring it to me at the bus station. I'll make it worth your time. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm only too glad to help you. I haven't forgot the ten bucks you gave me this morning. You put this thing over for me, and there'll be 50 in it for you. Gee, 50 bucks? Hmm. I haven't got much time. It's a quarter after 11. I'll meet you on a bench at the bus station. I'll be there, Mr. Nugent.
Is your box, Mr. Nugent? Good. Anybody see you get it? I don't think so. I didn't see anybody. I brought one of your hats, too. I got kind of crushed, but I figured you might need it. Swell. You think of everything. Here. Here's your 50. Oh, I hate to take this, Mr. Nugent. It wasn't worth it. No, it isn't worth it. Any idea what is in this box? Yeah. 28000 in cash. I couldn't help seeing it. The box flew open when I pulled it out. You still brought it to me? Why not? I like to think that you're my friend. You better be getting on your bus now. To look. I bought a lot of swell clothes yesterday. They'll be delivered tomorrow. My room rent's paid in advance. I want you to have them. You got the key. Go on in there tomorrow and take out everything. I couldn't use them, Mr. Nugent. I found out a long time ago that it doesn't pay to look prosperous in my business. I'll take care of them for you till you get back, though. Look. If you ever need me, I got a room at 410 Poconoak Street. The street was named after an Indian, so they say. You can't forget a name like that. Poconoak. Well, I'll be going now. Good luck, my friend. Don't forget. 410 Poconoak Street, room 8. I won't. Take a walk. Sir, dear. On your feet. Try these on for size. What's in that box? Money. I'll let you keep it on you until you get to headquarters. Why am I being arrested? I suppose you don't have the slightest idea. Or maybe you're trying to tell me that you're not Lee Nugent. I am Lee Nugent, all right. The money's rightfully mine. Who says it isn't? I'm picking you up for murder. Murder? Maybe you've forgotten all about the policeman you killed in Chicago. So that's why he didn't claim it. What's that? Look, I'm not the man you want. So now you're not Lee Nugent. A moment ago, you were. Well, I'm Lee Nugent, but I'm not the one you think I am. Yeah, come on. Please. Hello, Roy. This is Pat Henley. I'm at the Central Bus Terminal. A detective just picked up Lee Nugent, who collected that dormant account this morning. Yes, I'll follow through at the police station and call you from there. headquarters and you're not the police what's this all about you'll find out inside Eddie Donnelly. Does the name mean anything to you? Then I'll refresh your memory. Joe Nugent, your father, was my father's partner. Your old man turned crooked, ruined the firm, then disappeared and let my father take the rap for him. Well, you're, you're all wrong. I'm not the man you're looking for. You listen, I'll do the talking. My father went to jail. Your father left his family here and then went to another country where he lived on stolen money. I want to show you something. Bring him in. 
I want you to understand why I swore I'd get even. Why I spent years hunting your father. I caught up with him ten years ago in the Argentine. But I was just a week too late. He died a natural death in bed. This is my father. Take a good look at him. He's been like this a long time. He doesn't know me, nor my brother. He didn't even recognize my mother the day they released him. Going to prison for something he didn't do snapped his mind. My mother died six months later. The shock of seeing him like this killed her. Now you know why you're here. If you let me talk, I'm sure I can convince you that I'm not the man you're looking for. My father couldn't have been in partnership with yours. My father was never in business with anyone. His name was Dan, not Joe. Furthermore, he died 20 years ago. I impersonated the man that you've been looking for because, well, I wanted the money in that dormant bank account. I don't blame you for wanting vengeance, but vengeance on the wrong man won't do you any good. You're not going to let him get away with this, Eddie. You say you can prove a lot of things, but how do I know but what you're stalling for time? Why should I be stalling for time? Why do you think I went through that window at the nightclub? I didn't know who you were. I thought you were a detective. I thought the bank had sent you after me because they had discovered my fraud. Suppose I send down to your old neighborhood and bring someone up here and see if they can recognize you. Old neighbors remember faces. I don't mean a neighbor from where you lived when you were a kid. I mean a neighbor from where you lived after your old man ran away. Uh, what's the name of that street? Uh, Reed Street, 295. But that won't help any. Why, the building burned down two days after they moved in. So you're not the Lee Nugent I want. Yet you sit there and tell me the very number of the street where you lived as a kid and about the fire. Get up. We're going. Suppose you're wondering how you're going to die. Maybe you think I'm going to shoot you and it'll be over all of a sudden. But it's not going to be like that, Nugent. I've had a lot of time to think what I was going to do when I found you. My father might as well have died because of what your old man did to him. It would have been better if he had. But only his mind died in prison. And I've arranged to do as much for you. Or you will die, all right. But your mind will go first. You turned the block too soon. This is Pocono. Back up. Smith. 
Mr. Nugent. What's the matter? They're coming for me. I've been hit. Would you help me? It'd be better for me if I let them get you. Then I'd be safe. What do you mean? I'm the man they're after, only they don't know it. They've been trying to find me for years. But they never gave a tumble to Limpy Smith, the peddler. You see, I'm the Lee Nugent you've been pretending to be. The one they really want to kill. You are Lee Nugent? Yes. I went in here. Take it the news wasn't so hot. Not so hot. We just finished talking to people at the bank. I told them I didn't want to prosecute you, but they wouldn't listen to me. You think it was their dough you got instead of mine. Maybe when I tell the judge how Eddie Donnelly wanted to kill me, you won't have to serve so long in prison. Well, whatever I get, I got it coming to me. Oh, here. This money's yours. No, no, my, my money's in the bank. What? Sure. You see, I wasn't going to be sucker enough to let you get away with it, so I took it out of the box when you sent me for it. I hope you don't mind. What? what are you going to do with all that money now that you have it? Well, first, I'm going to get my leg fixed. And then I'm going to start a business. What will you be doing when I come out? Oh, still writing features and covering the nightclubs, I guess. I'll give you a job when you get out, Mr. Nugent. Don't forget you spent some of my money. You can pay me back out of your salary. You might even work into a partnership. Sure. We could call the firm Nugent and Nugent. What a story behind the founding of that firm. Yes. The amazing story of how fate dealt with Lee Selfridge Nugent, who learned the hard way that there is no compromise with conscience. Now he will pay his debt to society, and after he has paid that debt, fate will be kinder to him. I know, because I am the whistler. Mm -hmm.